at JR from DTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D pop out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark preview or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. I'm going to start out with these two layers the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can of course create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key, I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring you back into the pencil which it has selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel. Drop down. Click on one corner. Click on the next. Hold the space bar. Pan down. Click on the bottom right corner. And then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again. Click and drag. And up. And complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to make it red just so that you can see it. There it is. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer for the snow border. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also going to double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J, Command J, and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So that layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt, G, Command, Option, G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the Quick Selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just gonna select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging and notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold hold, option the Mac, click and drag, refine that selection. to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be the triggers they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl P, Command C to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask. I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around our body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the Properties panel. We can click on Mask Edge. If you don't see the Properties panel, you can go to Window, Properties. Click on Mask Edge. And then maybe shift the edge for the negative value and see how that's adjusted. So we keep adjusting it, making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose the detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair. And hopefully, we'll get a better selection. Now, I didn't do that good of a job here, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now, and then I can come back with the brush tool. 
brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm going to put white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but I'm going to get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm going to paint on that layer mask to get rid. And I'm not going to take the time to do so now. I will do that after the photo and do the final image. But I'm just going to go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, I'm going to go over this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final image. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. So, the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're going to use. We're going to use this shovel with snow, so let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock, they're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on, so I would recommend you doing just so you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and then I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu. Under contents, choose content aware and press OK. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm going to press Ctrl D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're going to work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm going to go to the Channels panel. I'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white areas that I want to keep for sure so with the lasso tool selected I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection of the areas that I know for sure I want to keep which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color you can hold alt backspace option backspace on the Mac. Then control D command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we got to work on in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using the plan. In this case, we're taking a blue copy, applying the green blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You can also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and give it different results. In this case, I think I'm going to go with Screen and then I will just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges. Again, I'm going to go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid-tones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Control, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the Layers panel, on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document. 
document. I'm gonna click on the new AirMask icon and notice now the floor is no longer there. Now it's not a perfect selection but it's gonna work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, to transform. We can see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 in the back. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust the accordingly. Holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file straight. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. Here I can match scene of those better I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And let's show what you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard. Right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask. and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black. D, Command D in the Mac, go back into the file that we're working with and we're going to paste it here, Control D, Command D in the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen, so the black pixels disappear, and we only keep the bright pixels in the case of snow. Then I'm going to press Control D, Command D to transform, Control 0, Command 0 for bird's eye view, and I'm going to scale this element. Control zero, command zero again, zoom back in, and I'm gonna just rotate it to make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm gonna 
So maybe something... Something like this. And I, I can, you know, scale it more if I need to, or rotate it more if I need to. So whatever the source is I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right now. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform. This one's going to be the back. So I'm going to click and drag this one and place it way back there. And I'm going to press V to select the move tool. And I'm going to move it around just to fit it into the position. So maybe something like this. Actually, I just really like that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. Shadows. So first I will the snow here in the table and it's the shadow. So I'm gonna open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming to the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadows. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. If I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously, that's too much, so leave it at about 25%. And what I'm going to do now is right above this you know, element here, I'm going to create a new layer. that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board and actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue. what I'm gonna do now is work with different elements so I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe stock by the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the Libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the Lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to Edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, control D, command D in the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with. I'm going to paste it here, control V, command V on the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform, that's Command T in the Mac. Control zero, Command zero on the Mac, and scale this one in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool. And I'm going to move it or this color here under the board.
in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. And actually I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut off right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm gonna open up this group, double click on the snow layer here, and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, and I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial, and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra L. Then I can hold shift and backspace, or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel I'm gonna click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill with white on the areas that I wanna keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just gonna click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I wanna keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can essentially turn to white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image adjustment levels and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right. So we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool, select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush by clicking on the 